Hello, my name is Ning. Welcome to Sim Words. Um, hope you're doing well and hope you're keeping safe. Uh, God bless. May uh, you have a great day. Hello, Words family. It's Emma here. Welcome to church. I really miss you all, but I'm looking forward to the time that we can have a cup of tea together again soon. Hi, Words. It's Jess. I'm missing you all so much and I hope that you are all staying safe and I'm hoping and praying that we will be able to see each other soon. Bye. Hi guys, Stephen here. Missing you all loads. Stay safe, stay strong and we'll see each other again someday. Hi guys, um, my name is Emily. If we haven't met, I am now the youth pastor here at Werbs, but weirdly I'm still in London. So I am so excited for the day that I can come up and move to Derby and meet you all. Hope you're well. Hey everyone, it's Meg here. Hope you're all right. I'm really missing seeing everyone at church. Hopefully we can get back together before too long and see each other again. Hello, it's Jess here. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well and keeping safe. I'm missing my church family and really looking forward to seeing you all soon and lots of hugs. Bye for now. Hi everyone, it's Mike and Sidoni Swan here. I hope you're safe and well. Keep trusting, keep praying, and we'll see you soon. Hi everyone, hope you're all safe and well. Um, I just wanted to say that I miss you and I look forward to seeing you again at some point. Hi Wes family, hope you're all well. I love you and miss you and hope to see you soon. Hi from my conveyor hunter. I know we can't see each other at the moment, but we really miss you. I hope you are well. Hey Wes, it's Hope. I hope you have a great Sunday. Missing you all. Hey St. Werbergs, we're the Rankins. We've made it so far through lockdown and every day brings us close to the end. Can't wait to see you all again. Stay safe. Hey guys, it's Rani here. I hope that you're having a good Sunday or whatever day of the week this is for you. And I pray God's blessing on you all. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in person once the lockdown is over. So stay safe until then. Hi everyone. It's good that you're here. I hope that you're all doing well. Oh, I miss you all. Um, but I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye for now. Everybody. Oh. They still like snacks. Hello, everybody. No vibes, no. No. What? <laughs> hey, Webs. Hope you're all doing okay. Miss everyone so, so much. And can't wait to see you. Say hello, Lucy. Hi, good evening. Welcome to Church Online. It's so good that you're here. My name's Matt and it's my pleasure to lead us in a time of worship this evening. But before we sing, I'd love us to pray together. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each person watching. Thank you that you love each one of us passionately. You care deeply about us with a love that is unfailing and unceasing. And I thank you, Jesus, that you promised to be with us. So draw near to us now, I pray. Fill us with hope. Let us know your presence with us. Comfort your people, comfort your church, and come Holy Spirit. Amen. The Saturday was silent, surely it was true. But since when has impossible ever start you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power, 
runs in my veins still I believe there's another miracle here in this room This is the sound of the dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live on the live again This is the sound of the dry bones rattling Oh, Spirit, come Spirit, fall afresh Fall afresh on us We know that it's the same power So fill us with your power, fill us with your courage, give us faith today. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha If there's anything that he can do Just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden What happens when God says to me This is the praise, make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of the dry bones rattling mm -hmm. Plenty cost of fire Stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon Resurrection power Runs in my veins too I believe there's another miracle here in this room I believe there's another miracle here in this room This is the praise, make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of the dry bones rattling You did it then and you do it again Not gonna run out of miracles. You hear then and you hear today. You're just as able as you've always been. We need you now, God. We need you now, God. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna.
Hosanna in the highest. And Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the Hear my heart and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things unseen Show me how to love like you Love me Break my heart for praise yours everything I am for your kingdom's cause As I walk from earth into eternity Hear my heart and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things unseen Show me how to love like you Love me Break my heart for praise yours, Jesus, everything I am for your kingdom's cause, as I walk from earth into eternity. I pray that you would search our hearts, that you would test us in all our anxious thoughts. Search our hearts, lead us in the way of the last thing. Word 
my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we more less days to sing his praise than when we first How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Well, uh, good evening. It's so lovely to be with you tonight. My name is Phil Mann. I'm the lead minister at St. Werberg's. Um, Matt, thank you for leading us in worship this evening. Tonight, we are continuing a conversation around the issues about asylum seekers and refugees. It is the beginning of uh, Refugee Week. And we're trying to raise awareness uh, and understanding about the life that the refugees and asylum seekers face when they come to the UK. We have the real privilege of having a number of friends who are part of our community, who are part, who are asylum seekers and refugees. Uh, we've had a, such a privilege of getting to know them, to become friends with them, to support them and help them in a very small, minor way. Um, you may or may not be aware that just up the road from St. Werberg's Church is an initial accommodation. So when people come into the UK, they are placed into these initial accommodations. They're supposed to be there for kind of three to five weeks as they get processed and then moved on and dispersed to another part of the, uh, the country. Um, but we have found that most people are there for a lot longer than that. In fact, our friend who we interviewed this evening, I think, was there for about five months. Um, but it's been a real privilege for us to open up. We did it on a Thursday night before lockdown. We open up on a Thursday night and we welcome people. We befriend them. We have tea and coffee with them. We play games with them. We just want to welcome them in Jesus' name and make friends. They've been through all sorts of trauma. Trauma in the country that they live in that's forced them to leave. And then trauma even getting into the UK. And we want to love them. We want to just welcome them and throw our arms around them and show them some compassion. And so... As I said, we've had the privilege of that. They have taught us so much. As we have befriended these people, uh, they have shaped us and shaped our culture. And we are, so, uh, we are so privileged to have them with us. And so this evening we have um, uh, an interview with one of our friends. Uh, he, his face will be blacked out, uh, but you will hear his, uh, his voice. We do this for safety reasons, for himself and for his family back in his home country. I hope you'll understand uh, why we do that. But you'll hear his story and um, uh, excitingly uh, for him there is some good news at the end of this story so it's, it's going in a good direction. We're also going to hear from Elliot and Ainir. They're part of our community, we love them, um, uh, but they have been working with asylum seekers and refugees for a number of years. They are kind of our experts and they've been helping us uh, to think this through and to work out how we in practice can help people. So there are two interviews for this evening. Um, I hope you enjoy and find find something in the midst of it that you your hearts may be shaped and molded and broken um, for what breaks God's heart. Let's listen to these two interviews. With me now is another friend of ours. Um, I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit of your story and how you came to the UK. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. First of all, I'm sorry that I'm not showing my face. I'm sorry for the audience, but um, like this is safer, honestly. So basically, I'm from Syria and I came here less than a year ago. And um, like, I think it's, it's well known now what's happening there, or maybe some people don't know, but there is a continuous war in almost everywhere in Syria. And beside that, um, like everything is falling apart very quickly. So I had, after nine years of trying to survive during that war, I had the hard choice to just leave there because it's, things started to be like um, affecting me personally. Like at first I was trying to cope with everything because it's something aff affecting everyone, like affecting millions. But at the end, I had to make this very difficult decision because things started to be like, you know, against me personally. So I just had to leave and not, not even thinking about consequences. And I arrived here not knowing, having no idea what, what's like, what's going to happen, where I will be settling down and like what's, what's going, how the future is going to be look like. But um, things, honestly, slowly got better and better, despite all of the difficulties, including this, um, I, can, I can say, strict asylum system, mm. which is good in some ways and very, very bad in other ways. And I think, like, I will, I will not go in details, like, about the process, because um, I, I believe this is something everyone should should learn about should be aware of it because it's at the end a system happening in this country so anyone residing in this country should know about it like uh how how people are dispersed where they are living how is the condition of living uh what support they are getting is it enough or not so every, like all of this stuff i think i will not go through it in details because it's supposed to be like more familiar with the others mm -hmm. um when when did you get to derby what was the what was that process uh, yeah uh well i when i first arrived uh to london um i w i moved from uh being in a in a hostel or like very temporary accommodation which is a small host hostel that get they put basically anyone who need accommodation in it and honestly it was quite horrible but I survived there for two days, and then they moved me to uh, Coventry, where I stayed there for a few days in a hotel, and then they moved me to Derby. And I thought I'm staying there for a long period, because honestly, like it, it, it seemed like a, like um, in a, in a way like somewhere where I will I would settle down, like having a room and like all of the facilities and stuff. And so it took me around 15 days from the first day I arrived to, to from London to Derby. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you arrived in Derby and how long, how quickly did you connect into St. Werbergs? Ooh, uh, it didn't take me too long because um, I, honestly, this is one of the, the stuff that I feel really blessed and lucky about it because it took me like a few days until I settled down. I just tried to, you know, um, put myself in the new situation, like putting my mind and all of my thoughts that this is my new reality. And then uh, a friend of mine I met there invited me to, to go to the upbeat community first. Brilliant. And from there, I met the very, very nice people like Elliot and Yanir. And they invited me to, like, they told me we have this activity in the, in the church. And I was really happy to go there. And the first day I went there was on the, uh, um, you know, the uh, Thursday's activities in the evening. Yep. And for the next four months, almost every Thursday, no matter how bad the weather is or anything else happening, I love to go there. Brilliant. Yeah, I can only apologise about the weather. <laughs> That's all right. We we have something similar in in like during few months in in Syria in the winter, but not 
all year long. <laughs> Not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, you've obviously left your home country. Mm -hmm. You've um, and all the challenges that 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 we can only imagine what that's like. But have you left family? Uh, yes, I left my entire family there. My parents, my brothers, and my wife. And they were like, before I leave, um, I didn't get the chance even to say goodbye to my wife and my brothers. I was able just to see my parents briefly before I just, you know, because this this particular decision took me between like few hours to around two or three days to, to make it because I had no time. Like it's either now or I will, I will, I will maybe I would have regret what, what would have been happened there. We can only imagine the, the challenges that you must have faced and the pain of leaving your family. Mm -hmm. um, but what's, what have the, the, the kind of, what, how have you been received here in the UK? What reception have you encountered? Uh -huh. Uh, well, if you are talking about like the the um, my my experience about that, I wouldn't say it was a negative experience, but this might be just me because uh, as as you you have seen already, I have the uh, I'm blessed and have the privilege of being able to speak English fluently and to be able to express what I need or what I feel or like to to say yes or no for something or ask at least about things. But honestly, I've seen other people, because like I like to observe things, mm -hmm. that maybe didn't get the same, we can say, positive experience that I had regarding, um, uh, you know, like saving my dignity yeah. and saving my, my um, we can say, my self-esteem as well, especially in, in this long process, which is, now being worse than than before because of the current situation so i've seen like many people who were just ordered to do things to move from one place to another or just because they can't express what they need in in english because they don't have this privilege so they were dealt maybe in in some kind of discrimination i can say because they were not able to to express um we again it, it's difficult for me to fully understand um you know i was born here um uh, and the idea of leaving everything to come to a different country with that kind of desperation of mm this is the safest thing for me and the best thing for me. Um, uh, we can only imagine what you have been through. Um, I hear now though that there are some, there are some good news for you, that things are starting to look up a little bit. Yes, yes, thankfully. So you've, you've uh, been granted permission to stay? Uh, yes, I've been granted uh, in March, I was granted my permission to stay. Uh, after a long waiting for around six months, but honestly, this is this is the we can say the deadline. Like it's it's even mentioned by the Home Office that it's up to six months. But this is this is only my case. Uh, I know some people who have been here for uh, one year and two months, and they are still waiting with no with no response, no uh, you can say communication or interaction or explanation why this happening, and this may some people suffer from mental issues yeah. because of lack of, um, you know, stabilization, st stability maybe, mm -hmm. uh, because they don't know whether they will be accepted or not. Even though like they, like even thinking about sometimes going back, being refused and going back to another country would be a nightmare, even if it will not happen, but just thinking about it. So yeah. I was blessed to be uh, to get my permission to stay quickly and even more blessed to 
find uh, people and other like you can say charities and organizations who are helping me now to to be more you can say integrated in the community brilliant uh, it's such good news and i'm so glad that things are going in a positive direction for you thank you so much um for sharing your story with us now we are so appreciative thank you so much bless you with me this evening are Elliot and Aine, uh, who are part of our church family, uh, dearly loved, well known within the community. Uh, but we may have people watching this evening who've never met either of you two. So would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Uh, my name's Elliot. I work for Upbeat Communities. Uh, I work for and with refugees. I refugees and asylum seekers i teach a lot of english uh at the moment online previously not online and previously also involved eating a lot and um going on lots of trips we're not doing that at the moment um my name is Reed and i'm married to elliot um, and i work for Refuge as well i um i'm a manager there i manage a project called welcome boxes which welcomes asylum seekers to the city um, and I manage a hosting scheme that hosts destitute asylum seekers when they haven't got anywhere to live. If you've got a spare room, you can speak to me later. Um, and also resettle Syrian refugees across Derbyshire and Lincolnshire. Amazing. Does, does that make you I near Elliot's boss? Always. In many <laughs> But not that one. <laughs> no, we have slightly different tracks, and that's why we're still married. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so today is the start of Refugee Week, uh, which is why we're just having this conversation. Um, can you tell me a little bit about where, what the plans are for Refugee Week? What's the point of it? Um, why are we doing it? Well, in previous years in Derby, um, we've had a whole host of different things on the programme. It could be eating together, meeting, exhibitions, all that sort of thing. And the idea is to uh, help people to gain awareness of what it is to be a refugee and how we can help refugees right where we are. Um, this year is, is not going ahead in that format. There's going to be uh, a much smaller, limited kind of online presence. But, but really, we can, uh, we can, that's the cat. <laughs> We can do things, you know, we can, we, can, we can help refugees and be welcoming to refugees and asylum seekers every day of the year. We don't need a special week. So how many refugees and asylum seekers are currently in Derby? Mm, do you want to do that now? Yeah, um, so you can um, go online, I think it's to the Home Office website and look at statistics. Um, the usually six months out of date um, right. but currently uh, there well there is a, an initial accommodation in Derby that is known to house um, about 220 uh, 220 individuals who have recently arrived to the, to the UK um, and then probably between seven eight hundred individuals across the city or households across the city and then um, and then I wouldn't know how many refugees there are in Derby because um, once people get their permission to stay, sometimes they stay in Derby or sometimes they move on to find us uh, work elsewhere. So probably topping a thousand people. And in the midst of um, COVID-19, are refugees still coming in? What, what's the current situation? Um, do you want to answer that? I don't know the answer. I mean, we see it, we certainly see in the news that, you know, um, from time to time, of course, the more people are entering over um, through across the channel. Um, and it's quite likely that a number of those people will end up uh, in Derby. But we, since, since the lockdown, I suppose, we haven't really had so much to do with the initial accommodation centre. Uh, and that's where they would go. So, quite possibly, but we, we don't actually know uh, for sure. Um, so what, what have you guys been doing 
during this season and during lockdown to support the people we do know and um, our friends who have been moving into the city or moved here over the last few months? Uh, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, well, I suppose um, with the work that we do in terms of welcoming um, people who are seeking asylum to the city, um, our referrals have kind of come to a stop because um, asylum seekers are not being dispersed to Derby at this current point during COVID. Um, there's little movement in dispersal, which isn't a particularly nice word, but that's that's the term that's used, moving people. Um, so we've not had very many referrals of new people coming, but we have had a lot of referrals um, working more and more with midwives across the city. We've had a lot of referrals for women who are in the asylum process who are pregnant um, and are really struggling for support because the places they would maybe go for support are now shut. Um, so they've become even more isolated than they normally would have. Um, so we've been working really hard. Um, I think probably a lot of people watching this evening have given a lot of baby equipment and we've had a lot of buggies and changing nappies, changing mats and things like that that have come through the house and gone out the other end uh, as quickly as they've come in. So we're really grateful to WIBS community especially that women's group, you're just absolutely on it. I think the messages have barely gone out and there's been a response and carloads of stuff, not just little things, but carloads of stuff. They're just being driven across the city and just blessed women who are maybe expecting their first baby and have absolutely nobody. Um, uh, if you have been part of that, thank you so much for giving and supporting that. Um, Elliot, what have you been, how have you been dealing with your English lessons and all the things that you normally do? Yeah, so um, our lessons have all gone online. So um, I spend a lot of my day uh, online on Zoom uh, uh, with people. And uh, yes, it's about teaching English, but uh, it's about helping people to feel less isolated. You know, if they can learn English, that's great. But if they can see someone um, who will say hello to them, or maybe listen to them, uh, who will help them to feel less lonely. You know, that's that's the point of it, really. So I've got a few classes, a few large classes uh, in the week. Uh, I also do another class, um, English through the through the Bible, and then I'm, I've also picked up some other lessons um, further afield in Derbyshire, because the regular teacher can't can't go to the house. So uh, I'm teaching, uh, well in Derby, uh, in Derbyshire. Uh, I've also seemed to pick up, we have guests, people who come to these classes. I think I had someone from Preston, Sheffield, Manchester, Wakefield. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I had a few people from Iran, actually in Iran on the classes as well. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's amazing. Uh, that, that really, um, yeah, part of the digital world, isn't it? Who knows who's watching, but uh, what a privilege to be able to help people in whatever situation they're in. Have you, are there any, um, I don't know if you can tell, tell us any stories of, you know, we've, we've all experienced lockdown, we've all experienced the situations we're in. Um, how is this working its way out for those who perhaps, are, you know, are there people who've just got literally turned up in the country and lockdown happened? Uh, what's, um, what's the impact on those who are seeking asylum in this nation as we the rest of us have just have had to struggle with the lockdown situation ourselves. Yeah, so uh, we've um, we've definitely uh, come across and now we're friends with um, individuals and families who arrived literally days to Derby before lockdown happened, and they were utterly disorientated. And you know, where normally we you'd have a little bit of orientation and we'd maybe do a welcome box and get to know them and accompany them to local GP surgery and help them register and help get their kids into school. None of that happened and they literally did not know whether they were coming or going and already confused, often traumatized 
um, very, very lonely. That has been compounded with the situation because there is further isolation. <laughs> um, so we have really worked hard to try and reach out to these individuals and try and help build bridges for them. Um, in the meantime, while we're within lockdown, um, one of the ways we've been able to do that is we set up a WhatsApp group um, and um, individuals have been able to join that. So it's just a broad broadcasting group. Um, we now have over 200 individuals on that group. So they get, wow. yeah, so um, they get um, the Zoom links for all of our classes, personal invitations saying, morning, everybody, please come today. You're really welcome. Um, daft videos, messages from volunteers, messages from staff. I'm just trying to, we're all about building community because that's what God is about. Um, and if we can't do it face to face, then we'll find another way. And with God's help, I feel like we've been able to do that um, a little bit. As lockdown has eased, we've been able to go out and meet some individuals um, face to face at a distance. Um, we've been able to deliver groceries. So we're going tomorrow. Um, every other week we're doing that so we're delivering across the city and uh, we've been able to get donations from the hope center which has been brilliant they're packing everything up for us um, that has been really special because there are many people living alone and have nobody to talk to in the morning and i know that for us for some who are in families we're probably thinking oh how nice to have some alone time away from everybody um, but actually if we're living on our own that also has its challenges and um, there have been individuals that have got pretty tearful when we've arrived um, with a grocery pack and again it's probably not about the grocery pack it's about that face-to-face -face and saying hello and um, asylum seekers are living on 35 36 pounds a week um, that doesn't go very far and at the beginning of lockdown when we were all going mad buying our antibacterial wipes um, and traveling around the city and to the outskirts of the city looking for nappies etc that was not an option for a lot of the people that we support they didn't have transport to be able to go from shop to shop until they found what they needed so, yeah, and so they Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was just going to say it was also the case just before lockdown when some people arrived. Um, they hadn't been issued any, their cards to be able to access even that small amount of money. So there were a number of families who were newly arrived, no idea where anything was in the city, no idea how to access schools or anything. And they had been left uh, essentially by the Home Office with no money. They had nothing. And so you know that was that was a very difficult period of time for those people as well yeah. Yeah. you know for us i think you know i think lockdown is difficult but we're established but how much more difficult would it be if we we don't speak the language we don't know our way around and we've got no money at all and we don't know anyone to call to get some money and that's that's a situation for uh, for certainly some of the people that we encounter here in derby yeah. uh, um i mean that is heartbreaking and um the, the only thing I want to say to you guys is thank you for for being there for being you know part part of an an answer to some of that question to su support those people who are in that situation um uh you know if there wasn't an upbeat then those people would have been really struggling so thank you for being part of that um obviously one of the other uh the big conversation in our culture at the moment is around race and equality and um uh it just feels like it almost is maybe it's a too basic a question but um with the people that we're seeing joining us and move, coming over to the uk for asylum what's what are the stories that you're seeing what are the conversations you're hearing about us firstly as a nation and how we welcome the outsider and those in need um, uh, but also then perhaps us within Derby, what, what's going on in Derby, um, and even the church, there's kind of three levels to that. What's, um, 
yeah, I don't know if you can speak into that. It's not a very well formed question, but um, have you got any anything to say? Speak into those things. Um, well, I, I remember an encounter I once had with one of my students, and um, he was a policeman, and he had come from Saudi Arabia. He wasn't a, an asylum seeker; he wasn't a refugee. He was here for a course with the university, and um, he said to me, "Elliot, where are the people on the street?" This is some time ago, and well, that's that's who there are, you know, because every no, where is everyone? And um, he found it very difficult. He was here; he had been sent here for this course, and um, he hadn't been invited to a home, and he found that very very difficult, because um, in in their culture they would be a lot more welcoming and hospitable. And I've been mm -hmm. thinking this week in preparation for this. For this video i think it's it would be quite rare for um an asylum seeker or a refugee to be invited into someone's home for a meal and and we can do that we can go to our friends or previously we could go to our friend's house or people could come here and we, we can take that for granted but when you come from um a culture that that is that's much more part of it that families are part that hospitality is much more a part I think that whole not being invited to someone's house is is very difficult. That's not a that's a cultural thing more than that yeah. anything else. But I was thinking, you know, I think people really miss not being part of that family, not not being invited in. That's one of the things I, I thought of. Mm -hmm. I think Darby, on the whole, is a relatively welcoming city, and I think. We stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before, I think, in many ways. Um, the Red Cross does an amazing job in Derby of working with communities and working with those who are seeking refuge. You've got Derby Refugee Advice Centre, you've got the Hope Centre, the Derby City Mission. <coughs> we are blessed in this city. And I think when people leave um, the initial accommodation and go to other cities, they miss Derby big time and um, it's often when we we leave we realize what we've had and i think we hear that story over and over and over again however that there, there is a, a more difficult side to living here i think if you're not from um the uk and an example i can think of is a gp surgery really difficult to register a GP surgery very often um, individuals are turned away because they haven't got the right documents and but usually they have got the right documents and that comes up time and time again and people not quite understanding that the person in front of them has probably experienced more trauma and see things that we will never ever have to go through or see um, and there's there's probably a, a, an underlying lack of grace. Um, we don't understand, you know, we haven't walked in people's shoes. Um, we haven't, we don't know what it's like. So coming into a conversation with a bit of grace um, and being open hearted about recognizing maybe I don't understand where you're coming from, but I'm gonna choose to make an effort. Um, we've got some work to do there, I would say. Um, sometimes we are the cause of added trauma and um, the way that we respond to people. I think there's some really good examples from the really good, good doctor surgeries, some really good schools that go out of their way to oh. help with uniform, go out of their way to help with translation, all sorts. But there's, like you say, there's also the other ones that, that kind of don't want to make it easy for people. I, I went um, to the doctor surgery with, uh, with one of my friends to try to register and and the receptionist was so obnoxious, I just thought that you're probably going out of your way to be even more obnoxious than normal because this is and I thought, what a shame. Um, and of course there's, you know, hate crime that, that goes on um, against people, uh, which, is, which is terrible as well, on the negative side. So, um, so what about us as a church? Like I, I love the fact that we um, that we welcome all, and uh, 
you know, when we were when we were in church, when we were actually back in the building, you could look out and you could see um, a lot of people who we knew were re refugees and asylum seekers alongside students and families and all sorts. And I, and I love that that combination. Um, and I love that you know, we were doing the Thursday night group that welcome people. Um, but is there something more? But I think you just uh, the phrase you just used there, Ine, was um, that we cause extra trauma sometimes by how how we don't welcome. Um, I would hate us to um, to be adding trauma onto the people who are already so traumatized. So, how are there any things that we can learn that we can do um, to increase our welcome and to be, I guess, increasing our equality within our in our and our diversity within our community I think it's always good to start with an encouragement and I think um I think I freaked you out the other day Phil because I said I was watching you on Sunday morning I meant it really nicely <laughs> it was a bit off. <laughs> um sorry about that um but I think when I think back to Sunday mornings, which seems like a, a lifetime ago yeah. now, um, I think I think in general there's always been an element of welcome, and um, I think it's I think our Thursday nights. I know people who have um, chosen to be part of the Thursday evening um, have often come in feeling very ill-equipped and known what what's going to happen and, and feeling maybe that they've stepped out of the boat and they've certainly stepped out of their comfort zone um, quickly realized that um, actually these are just people like us and these are husbands and wives and brothers and sisters and we have far more in common than we do not and it's finding that common ground that launches a relationship launches a friendship and not taking ourselves seriously having a laugh just laughing i remember jenny saying she i mean she's quite aggressive when she plays table football jenny <laughs> um, i didn't know where you were going on that one all i heard was jenny's quite aggressive um yes keep her away okay. from everybody <laughs> no, no no she's very aggressive with table football so do keep her away from table football um, good to know like she thought really I don't she wasn't bothered who she was playing with she just got into that and people remembered that mm. they thought that was great and that builds a memory that builds relationships I think it's more simple than we think we I need think, to strip um, it back I think maybe was it Matt when he was welcoming people who was welcoming people to one of those events Matt yeah I think it was Matt, Matt so he was, he was looking he was re reading people trying to get write people's names down oh, Matt White yeah and um yeah you know, it wasn't going particularly smoothly. But no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, you're giving it a go, and we're all making a mistake together. And you know, let's just let's just have a laugh. Mm. I'm sorry if I get your name wrong, but mm. you'll get my name wrong. And for those, just just to clarify what that point was, we were hosting. It was one of our messy church events, and Matt was on. Matt White was on the door, trying to write down people's names as they came in, so so we could keep some kind of register and work out who's all, who's in the building and all that type of stuff. But he just had a couple of challenges over spellings of names, and um, it meant that the queue got longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. and do you know what? People remember that because he laughed at himself. Like, it, there are very humorous people in the asylum community. <laughs> they like a good laugh. There's not much to laugh about. So when we find something to laugh about, that's let's milk it. Um, and they. They remember that they, even though Matt was, you know, confused with his spelling, which is interesting because he is very grammatically correct. Yes. Um, in English, to be fair. In English, <laughs> yes, maybe not in Arabic. Need to work on that. Yeah. Um, but they didn't mind. They thought that was great because he was taking time. He was laughing with them. Just one human to another. Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, when they when they've met up and they've got up for a coffee with someone and, and they remember that I think being listened to is very important um, not you know not not saying I, I'm your friend because of this or you know with conditions it was just you know just sitting down for a chat and and uh, 
and valuing people really, I think is so important. Yeah. I think as well when, when at the, on occasions in the in the church building in the service, um, we we prayed for other nations or people from other nations have prayed in their own language. I think that is uh, that's honouring to their culture, honouring to their language. I think that's really crucial. Um, yeah, those sorts of things I think are really really very important. Yeah. yeah. Um, Elliot and I know it. I you freak me out by saying that you watch me on a Sunday morning but um, by watching you I have learned so much and um, the way you unconditionally love people and welcome them is I think God's heart I, and I, um, I, I love that you're part of our family <laughs> and I love that, that as I watch you I, I, some of that gets to rub off on me and um, I want more of that. Um, and I have loved what our friends have brought to our community. Um, I have learned so much and um, have had my heart broken as I've heard stories, um, have changed some of my opinions, um, and, but I've got so much more to learn. And so as a church, as we, you know, in the midst of, COVID-19 to try to work out what we can do to serve and to care for people who are in difficult positions. Uh, we want to continue to support what you're doing at Upbeats, um, especially for those who've come to the city and are have nothing and are in all sorts of difficult challenges. But, but it's not just for now. This is an ongoing commitment that we want to um, pour ourselves into, to continue to welcome people unconditionally in Jesus' name. and um, uh, to allow the people and our friends that we make to shape and mould us, to teach us more about um, who God is, who we are, and how we need to uh, um, connect with people. So thank you for all that you do. Um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, having been really nice to you, um, and I'm not, even being paid, I'm not even being paid for this, uh, can I... <laughs> And again, this might seem like an obvious question. What what would you say are the prayer requests at the moment? How how sh how can we be praying for uh, asylum seekers and refugees in these days? Um, something that's going to happen in the next month or so um, is that we we are going to see the destitute released onto the streets again. Um, so during lockdown, um, local councils took responsibility for providing a roof for as many as possible. Um, that's not going to go on forever. And um, over the as lockdown is released, <clears throat> that provision is going to come to an end. And we are talking about a lot of people in our city who are going to be back on the streets. That's the, ho the homeless community, those who are currently have no home, and um, destitute asylum seekers, and individuals who have just been given permission to stay, who have actually got refugee status. There will, there will not be enough housing for them. Um, we're about to enter some difficulties. So... I think that needs a lot of prayer and a lot of action from the church, actually, because God cares for these individuals. And if we've got a spare bedroom, it could be used to bless somebody. Um, so that that's an immediate. We're kind of holding our breath. That's coming <laughs> in the next three weeks. And we're starting to prepare for that now. Um, I think I think it's difficult for. Um people who come to Britain from another nation, but very often they kind of live in between worlds, I think. They're living in Britain, but their heart is back at home. And so they're having to juggle those two things and whatever they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, they might be thinking of family back home and uh, very concerned for them uh, in their situations, concerned for their safety, you know, generally, but also could be for the, you know, in times, in terms of the virus. So there's that, you know, people are, are dealing with. Um, I think it's good. I think to help other people is probably good to pray for ourselves. 
that we have compassion, that we, that we remember um, the week is longer than a Sunday. Um, I know that number of people from, from Wurbs uh, have got contact details. They're, they're friends with uh, refugees and asylum seekers and they've been sending them messages and that's, that's fantastic. You know, please keep doing that. You know, those little things mean so much. Um, so uh, I, I remember a guy who came to our house and he was from Afghanistan and he said, uh, oh, I'm from Afghanistan. We knew he was from Afghanistan. And, and we, <laughs> yeah, we know where you're from and uh, we know your name. And, and he said, oh, you're not saying anything. Are you scared? And we're not terrorists. And we, we, we you know, we, we just felt proud that um, this person could come to our house. And I also felt, you know, what an opportunity, you know, at the moment, certainly now, but even then, we, we couldn't go to Afghanistan. You know, it would have been a bit tricky, but he just lives along the road and he could come. And I thought, what a privilege, you're coming here. And, uh, and how easy that is to open our door and say, come on in. And, uh, and what a shame we haven't had anyone from, from Afghanistan to our house before. So, you know, it's just those little things really, you know, and uh, being available. And uh, thank you all those people that, that are making such a difference to many people's lives in, you know, in, in very small ways. The small things make such a difference. So thank you. Um, I'm going to finish by praying, if that's all right. Great. Father God, we, we know that it is your heart to welcome the foreigner amongst us to um, care for those who are uh, the last the least the lost those who are hurting those who've gone through trauma those who are being oppressed and lord in our city uh, we have many friends who are coming here who've been through all sorts of challenges and difficulties where they have had to flee for their lives and um, we get the privilege of welcoming, welcoming them. So Lord may you do a work in us as a church, may you shape and mould our heart and give us more of your heart Lord, break our heart for what breaks yours we pray. Help us to welcome those around us those who are coming to our city, let's love them unconditionally. Let's pour out grace upon them. And Lord, may you inspire us to, to small little ways of how we can do that, whether it's um, messages when lockdown ends, whether it's inviting people around for lunch, whatever it may be, Lord, help us to be better at welcoming those, to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. And so, Father, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of lockdown, we pray for those who are really struggling, who've been through all sorts of problems, who don't know which way is up. Uh, they're in a country where they don't speak the language. They're in a country where they are in lockdown. They don't know how to get food. Lord, we pray that you will continue to provide for their needs. We thank you for Upbeats. We thank you for all the work that they're doing to connect with so many. Lord, may you use us to support them and to be part of that. But also, Lord, we look ahead. We see the challenges that may come as lockdown eases and people are made destitute. Lord, this can't be right. There must be answers to this, these questions, to value people, to love them, to help them. And so I pray, Lord, that you will give us great wisdom and insight into what we can do. But I also pray, Lord, that you will change unjust systems so that people will be cared for. So we thank you for this conversation this evening. Thank you for what it stirred. And we pray that you will use this um, as we grow to become more like Jesus. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. guys thank you so much um uh this has been a real privilege and a joy so thank you for everything you're doing and for giving up your time to speak to me tonight thank you thank you god bless 
this week I've had the privilege of interviewing a number of our friends um, who are seeking asylum or are refugees in the UK and um, it's impacted me. Uh, hearing their story, hearing their trauma, hearing what they've been through has shaped me, it's shaped my heart and my prayer for you and as we've gone through this tonight is that it will have done the same for you. We sing a song in church and we maybe we sing it too glibly but we sing break my heart for what breaks yours and as we hear these stories we, our hearts are broken and we are impacted Jesus calls us to love our neighbour as ourself. And these are our neighbours. These are the people who are in our city, right on our doorstep, who we have the privilege of befriending, of getting to know, of hearing their story. And as we hear their story, and as we can support them and encourage them in very small ways, um, it changes us. It makes us more like Jesus. And so uh, my prayer is that you may have been stirred by this this evening, that it may shape you and mould you. And who knows quite what that looks like and what that, that works its way out of. But it would have done something in your heart to change, um, to change you, to make you more like Christ. You may be wondering, what can I do? What can I practically do? You want to be an activist and get involved. And um, uh, I want to thank those who have given, um, in particular supporting uh, young mums, first time mums who have uh, find themselves in these situations. And thank you if you've been giving nappies and clothes and toys to various people in need. But um, the initial accommodation uh, has asked us to provide, I think, 240 packs to the people who are currently living there. Um, Packs, we're going to be putting packs together of toiletries, toothpaste and deodorant and soap and things like that. Uh, but also we're going to put a few sweets in there and a card from us as a church just to say we, you are not forgotten. Uh, we are with you and for you. And it's just our way of blessing the current community in that place. Ordinarily in this time as a church, we would say donate stuff, come and give it to us. But um, with all the lockdown restrictions, that gets quite complex and quite difficult. So what we would love you to do if you felt able and called to do so would be to donate some money. Uh, on our website, you can go to Love Your Neighbour, part of Love Your Neighbour, part of our website. And on there, there's a donate button and all the money that comes in to a Love Your Neighbour part, um, uh, donations box at this point uh, is going to go towards people who are in need. And we will use money from that to help fund um, toothpaste and toothbrushes and stuff like that for those at the, the initial accommodation at the moment. So if you felt called, please go there and uh, make a gift. Uh, that will be really beneficial. Thank you so much. The other thing that we can continue to do um, is, is pray uh, and to pray for those who uh, find themselves in this situation. And as we pray for them and as we ask God's blessing upon them, God ch continues to change our hearts in the midst of it. If you already have friends who are uh, that you've been part of, that you've got to know, um, uh, whether on the Thursday night at St. Werberg's or just through being part of the, the, the Werbs family, um, then do make efforts, do remember them, do connect with them, try to contact them if you are able to and have those that information. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Uh, I just have one last thing that I'd love to encourage invite you to which is alpha alpha uh, starts actually tomorrow night um, we are doing alpha online and this is an amazing opportunity to be inviting people from across the city your friends your neighbors maybe you're new uh, you've got to know your neighbors in a new way during lockdown uh, for them to explore the christian faith um, all of the details are on our website people can sign up uh, we're going to be starting alpha over a number of weeks if um, we're going to set up lots of different groups hopefully and that's what our prayer is if you are interested and um you want to be involved do please get in touch with me for a conversation or if you want to be part of it if you want to invite your friends to it go onto the website and sign yourself up thank you so much for being here this evening uh we pr we are praying for you we miss you we love you and we hope that we will be able to see you all soon god bless mm -hmm.